Hello and welcome to another Bronte adventure. Today I'm in Thornton which is about a 20 minute drive from Haworth and it's a bit damp but we're going with it and we're here to explore the Old Bell Chapel. So let's go and have a look. And what I didn't know at the time I would end up having a much bigger adventure than I first thought so stick with me and find out what on earth I get up to. So Patrick Bronte served as the curate at the Bell Chapel in Thornton from 1815 to 1820. And this small chapel, originally called St James's Chapel, played a significant role in the early life of the Bronte family. It was during these five years in Thornton that four of Patrick and Myra Bronte's children were born. We had Charlotte, Bramwell, Emily and Anne. The chapel itself was modest and served a growing parish in an evolving industrial community. At the time, Thornton was transitioning from a rural village to a more industrial area, with the woollen industry rapidly expanding. The village was growing and the arrival of the workers to the mills brought new life and challenges to the local community. Although the Brontes were somewhat removed from the industrial activities, it would have been impossible to ignore the impact it had on village life. Though the Bronte children were very young in Thornton, this period was crucial in their development. Patrick Bronte, known for his passion for education, he began teaching his children really early. He believed in exposing them to literature, newspapers and ideas well above their years, even when they were still little toddlers. These early teachings laid the foundations for this remarkable literature work which would come from their children later in life. During the family's time here in Thornton, Mariah Bronte, Patrick's wife, struggled with her health. She was often unwell and managing the household with young children while suffering from this chronic illness really took its toll. It's possible that Patrick decided to move the family to Haworth and it was influenced by the hope that a change in the environment might improve her health. But, as we know, unfortunately she passed away shortly after the move. As Thornton's population grew, the small bell chapel could no longer accommodate the needs of this expanding community. In 1872, a larger, more modern St James's church was built across the road and the bell chapel fell into disuse. By then, the Brontes had long since left, but the old chapel remained sort of part of the village's history. And over time, it became known as 
the bell chapel, likely due to this prominent bell tower that eventually also fell into ruins. Patrick Bronte was more than just a clergyman in Thornton. He was also a social reformer. He had strong opinions about education, politics and morality, and he was deeply committed to improving the lives of his parishioners. His passionate sermons were well known, and he encouraged literacy and self-improvement among his flock. Patrick's involvement in the local community may not have been as famous as his later work in Haworth, but his dedication was clear even in those very early years. Although the Bell Chapel ceased regular worship after a new church opened, the graveyard around it continued to be used for burials for some time. Today, the chapel stands in ruins, but its connection to the Brontes make it an important historical site. Many visitors come to see where Patrick Bronte once preached and to explore the old gravestones that date back to his time and beyond. Try to show you the footprint of the chapel. This small wall here is where the outside wall of the chapel would have been and the remains of the bell tower section is roughly where it is now but of course on top of the tower. The ruins at the other end with its small rooms would have been the back end wall. I hope that makes sense. One of the problems with coming to places like this just after it's rained, suddenly all the midges come up and they're just hungry. And of course, they come and eat me. I am going to be covered in midge bites tomorrow. I can almost feel them crawling through my hair and down my back. Oh, and no matter how much you swat them and squash them, no, nope, there's thousands of the little so-and-sos out there to get me today. And of course, I'm the only person around, so like, mmm, tasty. So I head across the road to visit the new church. Well, not that new, but unfortunately it's closed. So I just have a little walk around.
So I'm here at uh, what would have been the Brontes home. As you can see, there's a lot of work going on at the moment because they're obviously renovating, tidying it up, getting it all ready for next year to open. And um, yeah, it's looking pretty amazing. I'm dying to have a sneaky peek. I'm dying to have a sneaky peek. I wonder if they would mind. Like they say, shy Ben's getting out. Maybe I'll give it a go. The house Patrick and his family lived in during their time in Thornton was located on Market Street and was part of his role as curate. Life in Thornton for the Brontes, though modest, was filled with intellectual activities and evenings likely spent around the fire with Patrick reading aloud and discussing books with Mariah. It was a nurturing environment for the children, even as they faced challenges like Mariah's illness. Inside. Recently, the house where Charlotte, Emily, Anne and of course Bramwell Bronte were born in Thornton has been saved through this amazing community ownership. The Bronte Birthplace Limited is a community benefited society and it raised over £700,000 through a share offering government grants, ensuring that the building will be preserved and eventually opened to the public. This Grade 2 listed house is set to open as a cultural and educational centre in 2025 in time for the Bradford's designation as UK City of Culture. Yay, go Bradford! Planned renovations include restoring the house's original features, like the fireplace, and creating space for an educational programme aimed at inspiring local children. One of the noticeable discoveries during the renovation was a hidden servant staircase, which adds to the historical significance of the building. I mean, this revival of the Bronte birthplace marks a key moment in preserving an often overlooked part of the family's story.
that belief that. I just went up to the house and I was videoing and filming and stuff. And I literally just saw the workman there and I said, I don't suppose I could have a peep inside. And they're like, oh, you can come and look at this room. So I went in and then I said, can I look in that room? And before I knew it, they were just like, oh, go on then. And let me look around. So if anyone's looking, it's going all health and safety building site. I was very careful. I was aware it was a building site. I took extra care. I told them that they would not be held responsible for anything that happened to me. So there you go. I covered all health and safety in that little section but I've got so much dust in my throat though I'd really want a big cough so I think I might head back to the church and have a sit down and have a cup I can't have a cup of tea can I <coughs> I'm gonna head back to the church and I might have a little nibble I have a cake in my bag mmm cake I will show you as well you'll be very jealous it's huge I got it in Howarth before I left and it's like the size of my head <laughs> right I can just see the church from here, so see you in a bit. There is a group of people, volunteers, that come here and preserve, maintain, uh, do gardening, you know, do all the little jobs that is needed to keep this place beautiful and it is in such good condition. The graves are looked after, the grass is cut, there's hardly any litter. It's, it's a really beautiful place and hats off to the volunteers that come here and do this. It's a beautiful place and they should be very proud of themselves. So well done to you guys. I know they have a Facebook page because I've, I've been following it myself. Woo! Slipping over. So maybe check that out. I'll put some information in the description below. I'll put some information in the description below. Um, they're always after volunteers and support. So have a look. You never know. There could be something you could do that could help them, even if you just follow them on Facebook. Lovely little, lovely little place. Thornton may not be as famous as Howarth in the story of the Brontes, but its role in their early life cannot be understated. The time spent here in this small chapel and this modest parsonage laid the groundwork for the remarkable literary achievements that were to come. It was a place of beginnings where young Charlotte, Bramwell, Emily and Anne took their first steps in life, but of course under the watchful eye of their dedicated father. Though Patrick moved his family to Haworth in 1820, Thornton remains an important part of the Bronte story. From the industrial Growth of the village to the early development of the Bronte children. Thornton holds a unique place in literature history. The Bell Chapel, though now in ruins, stands as a testament to the family's time here and the legacy they would go on to create. With the wooden industry rapidly expand, sorry, not wooden. Mm, I got that muddled up. Why is it whenever I try and film, some noisy plane decides to go over? It's hanging about. 
Still there. Still there. Still there. I give up. Try again in a minute. Ray, and it raised over 7,000 pounds. No, it didn't seven. It didn't do seven. It did a lot more than that. The kitchen. Thank you for watching today's video. Um, I know there's not much left to see of the ruins and I will try and put up, or I hope I've tried to put up as many photographs falling over all over the place today. I hope seeing the photographs of what it used to look like helps you understand what it would have been like for Patrick and Mariah and the children when they lived here. Um, hope you enjoyed it anyway. So thank you for watching. Please do that whole likey subscribey thing before I fall over because it really does help me out and it lets YouTube know that we want to watch more Bronte content. So until next Friday, take care, have a good weekend, and I'll see you for more Bronte adventures next week. Bye. <laughs>